Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to attempt to make the brakes on this car feel more like the brakes on this car. If someone were to ask me what's the biggest difference I've noticed between this 335i and my new G80 M3, I would say it's the brake feel. I'd imagine that a bunch of you would have thought that I would say that it's the power, but it's not really the power because this car has over 600 horsepower and this car has about 560. It is of course the brakes, but that shouldn't come with any surprise given this has six piston calibers up at the front and huge rotors that are drilled. For what it's worth, this 335i does have pretty decent sized brakes from the factory. The rotor is filling up that 18 inch rim almost fully. Now that this car has about 600 horsepower, about double of what it would have had stock, I'm not surprised that I can overwhelm the brakes at times. But it has to be under certain circumstances and that's where this upgrade will come into play. The plan is to upgrade to steel braided brake lines and to swap out the brake fluid to racing fluid. So this video is geared toward BMW owners that have pushed the power on their car significantly, making well over what it came from the factory with. Let's call it over 400 wheel horsepower on one of these type of cars. I know that's a big chunk of my viewers. There's pretty much only one scenario where where I've overwhelmed these brakes and that would be after a few hard haul downs over 100 miles an hour typically done at the drag strip. The amount of heat that you can generate in these brakes given the car has double the horsepower is an issue. On an M car you can expect drilled rotors from the factory. The reason you would want drilled rotors is because the pad when it gets hot enough will off gas and create a layer of gas in between the pad and the rotor and you need somewhere for that to be relieved to be able to keep surface area. Now, unless I upgrade my pads and rotors, I'm not gonna completely solve the issue, but I can go a long way to helping the cause. So here's a scenario you probably experienced. Uh, if you've braked about three times in a row over 100 miles an hour without letting it cool down for multiple minutes in between, when you go to press the brake pedal, it sinks down further than you're used to, and you don't get a reassuring feeling. In terms of having good bite, with heat in the rotor, that would require better pads and the drilled or slotted rotors. But in terms of avoiding a spongy pedal, that can be fixed with what we're gonna do in this video today. So what I'm gonna do today is upgrade to racing fluid. It's better than the factory fluid that you'd normally put in your car. One liter will flush the entire system and I'll show you guys how to do that on an E90 or E92, etc. And we're gonna also upgrade to steel braided brake lines, but I'm doing this more for maintenance because they have 200,000 miles on it. Uh, when you upgrade to steel braided brake lines, you may notice a little bit better pedal feel, but probably not under normal use, only when you have so much heat in the fluid that it would cause the rubber to expand. So basically in extreme situations, the combination of these two working together should help basically make a spongy pedal impossible when you have a lot of heat in the rotor. During day-to-day -day driving, I'm not expecting this to make much of a difference in feel of the pedal, but I'll definitely let you guys know after I do a quick test drive after we finish the job. But the main benefit's gonna be upgrading to a racing fluid. This is very expensive. It's about 70 bucks for a bottle like this for a liter to flush your entire car. But if you're a BMW owner that has pushed the limits on their car and now the engine's making almost twice the power or even just like 50 to 75% more power, then your brakes um, can be an issue if you're really hammering on the car. Probably on a racetrack, probably at the drag strip, but hey, uh, if you happen to get over speed in Mexico over 100 miles an hour a couple times in a row, you know, it may be an issue when you go to brake and you're gonna have to let the car coast for a while. If someone's coming up in front of you and you gotta scrub speed off on stock brakes when you're going a lot faster than the car was ever intended to, you may want better fluid. So what will make a uh, racing fluid different than DOT4 or DOT3 brake fluid? It's going to be the fact that the dry rating in terms of how much heat it can tolerate before it starts to boil is going to be higher. But there's something special about this fluid compared to any other fluid from the research I've done uh, that makes it really unique and really uh, a good upgrade for cars, especially as time passes. So what you may not realize is braking fluid has glycol in it, which is in the alcohol family and alcohol naturally will absorb moisture from its environment. Think of electronics cleaner where you're trying to clearing off a board because you're trying to displace water, you would use alcohol. So with time, after about two years, the fluid has to be changed even if you haven't driven your car and it hasn't really turned black because it will absorb moisture from the air. So now what you may notice is you get less life expectancy even if you're in a really humid environment. It just depends on how much moisture is in the air and how much is available for it to absorb. So a couple things can occur if you absorb moisture in your brake fluid. First of all, uh, with enough time, it can actually build up inside the fluid and cause the iron parts like the piston caliper to rust and cause your caliper to seize. So that's not a good scenario, so you can get stuck brakes. So the fluid inside the line would actually cause the components to rust. But besides that, what will happen is the fluid will absorb moisture and then if there's enough water in there, that will boil at a lower temperature than the fluid around it and it will cause vaporing 
and you'll have a spongy petal earlier on. So racing fluid typically has a higher dry boiling point, meaning if there's no moisture yet absorbed, it can take a lot more heat before it itself would boil. But a really good fluid will maintain a pretty high rating, even wet, meaning after it's absorbed a bunch of moisture from the air. That's what makes this fluid unique. So some cars would call for dot three fluid and some will call for dot four. BMW naturally calls for a higher dot four rating because they're performance based and they want to give you uh, a higher boiling point from the factory if possible. And most new cars have that anyway. But to put things into perspective, this has a dry boiling point of 446 degrees Fahrenheit and it drops all the way down to 331 degrees Fahrenheit or 155 degrees Celsius if it's absorbed a lot of moisture. It's wet rating, that's pretty low. So what makes this special is it's got a dry rating of 590 degrees Fahrenheit or 310 degrees Celsius and it maintains 518 degrees Fahrenheit or 270 degrees Celsius even when it's wet or the wet rating. So over time, you're not gonna lose braking performance under extreme heat as you would with other racing fluids. So I looked up another really good, really recommended racing fluid, uh, Motul RBF 600, and it's rated higher than this at 594, but it drops all the way down to 399 when wet. So for your street driver that's gonna try to run this for a couple of years, I think this is a better choice because as you get close to where you're gonna to need to replace the fluid due to absorbing moisture from the air, you'll still have good performance over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So the major takeaway should be the fact that you'll get your best benefit from the fluid. The lines, not so much. It may help with feel, but probably not. The main thing is if you're replacing lines due to age and you wanna just help with the aesthetics or make them so they're less puncture resistant and more robust, then you can change them out. My car has 200,000 miles, so I'd have to at least change it back the rubber lines, but I'm just upgrading to stainless steel so I can give you my feedback and let you know if I notice a difference. I know for a fact, without a doubt, that when the fluid is at its wet boiling point, if I'm really pushing the car hard on a track or whatnot, these will come into play when the fluid is hot, definitely. But under normal day-to-day -day driving, maybe not. Some people won't recommend stainless steel lines because of the lack of flexibility in them and then an issue with leaking uh, at where the joint is. But because this is a thread-in type, it's probably less prone to that because BMW doesn't use banjo bolts on their rotors and whatnot. They tend to use threaded lines. So that does help the cause to make these more feasible in my opinion. I'm not expecting a pedal that will travel less far or anything like that. I'm just expecting a firmer feel of the pedal when the car already has hot rotors. And now where would I recommend you guys upgrade to this fluid if you are probably touching 11 second quarter miles with stock brakes? So it probably goes without saying, but insulation is very critical on these because you don't want to kink them up or cause any issues with them rubbing on surfaces because it can cause them to either cause another component to fail or themselves to fail. These have a plastic sleeve over them to make that less likely, but just in general, the threaded design really helps the cause. Doing this will be in preparation for potentially adding better pads and rotors down the line. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's take a look at the lines I got. We have the two rear brake lines, which are identical. Comes with dust caps for the bleeder, and some washers. Now, the rear kit also comes with inner lines. I'm gonna leave these boxed up just so I don't mix them up, but these are gonna go on the inside. And I'll put a link in the description for where you can get the best price on the fluid and these lines. So here's the front. You have washers here, and you have zip ties to help you manage the lines and new dust caps. So the front should be easy to install. The rear shouldn't be that bad. I heard these inners can be a little bit more work, but we'll get into that now and see where we end up. So the goal is to flush fluid through the system. So what I'm going to do is empty out as much fluid as I can from this, and then we'll be ready to pour in fresh fluid to push through everything. Remove the cap and we'll start removing fluid from there. So from experience, an easy way to do this is just to get an old soap sprayer and just use it to pump the fluid out. So I was able to extract about that much. So now there's a filter or a strainer inside of here and if you leave it snapped into place, the straw of your little pump will only go down far enough to bring this to the minimum level and not bleed your clutch dry, etc. since they share the same reservoir. So I'll just leave that in and take out as much as you can with that filter in place. Now I can use this fluid for my one man brake bleeder. This is a simple little device, I'm using an old bottle and you put a piece of tube inside there, preferably plastic so you can see the fluid coming through, make sure it's submerged in the water. There's gonna be pressure buildup as fluid is added, so make sure that you leave this a little bit cracked for the pressure to relieve, for the air to be displaced, and this just sticks inside the bleed nipple on the car.
Here's the brake line, and use some silicone spray to help pop that out. There's a brake line popped out from both places. It just screws into here, and over here is where it connects. I'm using a line wrench to remove these. This is an 11 mil line wrench. Keep in mind the way I'm doing this will introduce air into the line. We expect that because I'm going to do a thorough bleed after. You have to use just an open end 14 on the caliper. So we'll grab the new line in place. Over on this end, you want to grab the washer that comes with the line. Up top is a 14 mil, down here is an 11 mil with your line wrench. Main thing you want to focus on is the management of it. Luckily, this is a good kit with two rubber grommets that snap into the factory place and there's enough slack on either end, so it won't bind up as it's being used. So they give you zip ties and bleeder caps, but really with the way this is managed, there's no way this would chafe or make contact with anything. It's installed just like the factory with two major mounting points. I don't see the point of zip tying it anymore without causing more issues. So I'm just gonna use these two and keep the original dust cover because it snaps onto the caliper and stays in place. You can't drop it or lose it. So this is ready for bleeding. We'll move on and do the driver's side front next. So this probably will be the worst line because it's right by the turbos, uh, but this is cracked. And whenever you see cracked lines, you have to replace them. It's one of the benefits of rubber is you can actually see when they age versus the stainless. But you know, these cars are only being kept on the road now, I believe. Uh, as a performance car, as cheap power for the money, not really as like reliable dailies. Once they're over 10, 12 years old, you don't necessarily drive a car that has deteriorated rubber all over it, right? Anyway, that's what they look like and that's why I'm replacing them. I'm going after the rear lines now. The outer one's relatively easily accessed, but the inner one could be a little more challenging from what I've seen, but this isn't bad. So now connecting to the subframe, we have the remaining two flexible lines on the driver's side of the car. So I use the following stubby wrench. Uh, it's 11 mil. It's quite tight in there. You're gonna to wanna to undo these two lines here so you'll have access to be able to put your hand up in here. Then you're gonna to wanna to go after this one, pulling toward the middle of the car, and then move the line out of the way to go after that one. It's a bit of a pain, and you definitely need one of these stubby 11 mil wrenches. Just because of the really hard angles up at the top, I used a regular wrench to finalize tightening the last line there. I used a stubby wrench and then a line wrench on one of the lines and then I ended up needing to use a regular 11 mil to get that angle I would have needed on one of the lines. It was pretty tight up there. Now we'll tighten up down here. So there's a final look at those. We're ready to bleed the brakes now. So I'm starting from the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder. I'm gonna bring over the one-man brake bleeder, insert it into here. We can crack this line open. So that's cracked open now. We'll go back to the master cylinder, make sure it's got a lot of fluid in it. I'm gonna fill the master cylinder to the brim because we're gonna be pumping fluid through the system. So right to the top. So I set the car up on a battery charger. I'm gonna show you guys why, because we're gonna be using a laptop to bleed the brakes. Got my key in the on position. I got the headlights off and the interior fan off. I'm all loading up Impa here to run that. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in getting this. You can find it at Beamer Geeks on their website. I'm gonna go F3 for E90, chassis, dynamic stability control. And we're gonna have to go to F6. And these are for the reworks. It's just not translated to English, unfortunately. But I know from previous experience. So DSC rework for the right rear is gonna be shift plus F4, saying to open the bleed nipple, which I have. Okay, 
Okay, now it's starting to close the bleed limpo. Pay attention to how much fluid is in that bottle to start. So that's how much fluid made it into the bottle after one wheel. And keep in mind that you have to, you can't just back it off slightly, you gotta back it off quite a bit. And then you gotta kind of run back to it and tighten it before any air bubbles can make it past the threads. But just know that you have to back it up a little bit more than you would think. So we lost a decent amount of fluid, so I'm gonna top off the bottle, it went about halfway down. So here's all the old hardware that we removed from the car. I'm gonna go underneath, take a look to make sure there's no leaks and everything feels good. And the system's fully bled. I'm gonna go take it for a test drive and I'll let you know my final thoughts. All right, I just got back from a test drive. I think it's safe to say that there's definitely a difference. I didn't really expect as much of a difference as I got. Uh, you basically don't feel much of a difference under regular pedal travel, but when you hammer it, the car tends to nosedive with a firmer pedal. Uh, it feels a little bit more secure. And that could be attributed to age brake lines being replaced or just flushing the fluid in general. But overall, I did feel a difference and I was expecting to tell you guys that I wouldn't. But anyway, take that for what it's worth. If this is the first video you're catching of mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like to help me rank better. Thanks for watching.